Shalom, 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 child of the Most High God. I believe you are well. I believe that you are keeping safe. My name is Onyango Eric. As always, I'm super delighted to share the word of God with you. Today I'd like to talk about or to give you 10 facts about Satan. You know, what is happening around the globe, it is because we don't know about Satan. We don't know him. We are defeated in spiritual warfare because we don't know who we are fighting against, our adversary. The Bible recalls him as our adversary. adversary, adversary, our enemy, number one. First Peter chapter, nine, verse, uh, chapter 5 verse 9, our enemy. When you look at what is happening, even in the soccer world, African Cup of Nations, there are big teams that are being defeated by small teams. Because we'll discover these big teams, majority of their players are playing overseas. So their format, their formation is well known. How they play is well known. But little, little team that they have, all, almost every player is a home based. Their pattern, their formation, how they play is, cannot be known. That's why they are bringing down giants. And if I believe us, we don't know about Satan. That's why we fall day and night. So today I shall be providing 10 facts about Satan. That you need to know who Satan is. You know Satan was an angel. Satan was one of the angels that were trusted by God. He was among the cherubims. You know cherubims are angels that are very closer to God. So the first, I would love to bring this to attention that Satan has his trinity. Trinity is that uh, three distinct nature, how they operate. They have three trinity. And I can say this trinity of Satan Similarly, you know Satan is a counterfeit. He loves copying. So he copied the operation of, of God. God operates in triune, in trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Even Satan operates in triune, in trinity. And this trinity of Satan comprises of Satan, demons. Demons are the fallen angels. A third of angels that were recruited by Satan to oppose the rule of God and to rebel against his rule and his laws. So, these demons, they are now furthering satanic agenda. They are opposing the will and the purpose of God. And the final one is the false prophet. False prophet completes the trinity of Satan. We can read in the book of Revelation chapter 20 verse 10. Revelation 20 10 we'll see this trinity. The Bible says Revelation 20 10 The devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet had already been thrown and they will be tormented day and night. So Satan operates with the false prophets, with the demons. Another fact that it is very important, we should know, don't be quick, you are invited, only communion. We will have communion service. You go in haste. Even Satan, they partake their communion. There is not only, but they have their communion. They break bread. We are quick, oh, we shall be having Holy Communion. We shall be having Holy Communion. So you rush, I, you need to be cautious. Because even Satan, they, Satan preside over demonic communion, wicked communion. We will read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse uh, 21. 1 Corinthians 10 21. Demonic communion. First Corinthians 10, 21. 
The Bible says, you cannot drink from the lost cup and also from the cup of demons. You cannot eat at the lost table and also the table of demons. So Satan has his own table. He has his own holy com uh, communion, though not holy, but they take it together. They have their own cup. You have to be very, very careful. Satan, the third point, Satan has his servants. The way God has his servants, he has prophets, and all those, Satan has his servants. And these servants, majority are backsliders. They are promulgating satanic activities. They are promulgating satanic uh, occult. He has his servants who are always ready to do his will. When we read the book of Second Corinthians, uh, Galatians chapter 1, let us, Galatians chapter 1, and we shall read how God has his servant and why you need to be servant. A servant of God demonstrates uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When he's serving, he serves joyfully because he has the fruit of the Holy Spirit. When he serves, he serves with patience. He cannot abuse people. He has humility. He has faith. He has love. He has mercy. He has compassion. He has self-control. The servants of God. When we read the book of Galatians, Galatians chapter 1, verse 7 and 8. The Bible says, Actually, there is no other gospel, but say this because there are some people who are upsetting you and try to change the gospel of Christ. So, the servants of Satan try to change the gospel of Christ. They are bringing heresies. They are bringing Gnosticism whereby they don't acknowledge Jesus as the Lord. They don't acknowledge Jesus as God. But even if we are angel from heaven, should we preach to you a gospel that is different from the one we are preaching, one we preach to you, may be condemned to hell? So, they are servants of Satan who are preaching different gospel. They are using different books which are not Bible. Bible settles all matters of Christian doctrine and also matter of faith and of ethics. Bible takes preeminence. Bible has the final authority. So anyone who is telling you, read this book, this book they add their service while anchoring their fact on this book on their books. That one is demonic teaching. They are servants of Satan because they preach a gospel that is not from God, a gospel that is uh, diluted, that is twisted. Those are servants of Satan. Who are the servants of God? 2 Corinthians 4, 5. Because I have to give you the difference. 2 Corinthians 4, 5. The Bible says, For it is not ourselves that we preach. We preach Jesus Christ our Lord and our, ourselves as your servant of Jesus' sake. So Apostle Paul is giving us a depiction of a true servant of God. A true servant of God Preach Jesus and him alone. Preach about the kingdom of God. So anyone who is preaching to you a gospel that is not about the kingdom of God, it belongs to the other camp, a servant of Satan. They twist the scripture. They lead what we call radicalization by giving you wrong doctrine, by lying to you, contradicting the Bible. They come with some narratives. So Jesus married, 
Jesus had a wife, what, and everything. They try to bring you doctrine of demons. We shall be reading. They have doctrine of themselves. First, First Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. There is the demon doctrine being promulgated by demonic servants. The fourth point, Satan as worshippers. So it is not all gathering, it's a gathering of God. I had a topic about uh, bewitched believers. There is a video that is trending of a church in Nigeria that a pastor performed deliverance through sucking of women's breasts. And there are so many women lining up to be sucked. That one is a gathering of Satan. There are some churches that they allow homosexuality. That one is congregation of Satan. Any congregation that is not aligned to the will and the purpose of God is a congregation of Satan. It is just, there is even America, the church of Satan. The Bible says that in the latter days, some will abandon the faith because they will leave the gathering of God and go to the gathering of Satan. Gathering of Satan because Satan has worshippers. Satan has worshippers. We saw even the father of Abraham, Terah. They were worshipping idols because they were worshippers of Satan. When we see the time of King Nebuchadnezzar, they were worshipping idols. Those are worshippers of Satan. The time of Pharaoh, they were worshipping idols. Those are worshippers of Satan. Even nowadays, we have Freemasonry. We have a lot of churches that worship the church of uh, the city of Ephesus. They are their own God that they were worshipping. God Atemi. We have Ashetera. We have Baal. We have, there are so many gods. Those are worshipping, worshippers of Satan. <laughs> Revelation chapter 13 verse 4. Revelation 13 4. The Bible says, Everyone worship the dragon because he had given his authority to the beast. They worship the beast also, saying, Who is like the beast? Who can fight against it? We have worshippers of Satan. Someone who can tell you, give sacrifice for your children. Someone is telling you, for God to bless you, you have to do such and such a thing. For you to receive salvation, those are worshippers of Satan. Because the Bible is telling us very clearly, when you read about uh, the Galatians and the book of Hebrews, tells us about the laws, but there are people who are about the laws, the tithing and everything, because they know where they belong. Worshippers, they are worshipping money. There are people who are worshipping gold. There are people who are worshipping different kind of occult. There are people who believe in witchcraft. There are people who are worshipping Yesu Atongaren. Because these individuals, they worship Satan. You know Satan takes forms. Satan can take a form of an animal, like the Garden of Eden. He took, he entered through a snake. Satan can take a form of a man. You remember when you read the book of Luke chapter 8, verse 30, that man that was living in the tomb, Satan was operating inside them. Mary Magdalene had seven demons operating in them. So when you are, Satan is inside you, you shall worship him. You shall be a murderer. You shall commit adultery. You shall slander someone. Because you are worshipping Satan. You have communion, you have fellowship with him. The fifth point, Satan has prophets. Not all prophets, because they have long robes, because they have media, because they have gathering, 
you believe that they are coming from God. Even Jesus said, in the latter days, false prophets will come, many of them, and they shall even deceive even the elect. We are living in there such a time that everyone wants to be prophet. And we have so many false prophets that are true prophets. I want to bring to your attention there is false prophets. At the time of the Bible, to date, we have false prophets. And they are satanic agents. The book of Micah chapter 3 verse 5 and 7 tells us that these poor prophets, they prophesy all the time good. They only tell you what you want to hear because of money. Those are satanic prophets. And sometimes they give false prophets, prophecy because they are motivated and they are manipulators. False prophets. The book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 11. Jesus is warning the church about these demonic agents called prophets, false prophets. Chapter uh, 24 verse 11. Uh, Jesus is warning us. He's telling us, then many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. So false prophets are out to deceive you. False prophets are taking advantage of your predicaments. False prophets are taking advantage of your challenges. You are sick, they are telling you give money, bring a certain amount. False prophets. Jesus is telling us, many will give up their faith because of these people. Then many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. So many prophets will appear. And the same verse, I told you, when a word is repeated in a chapter, know that it's some emphasis. It's called the rule of repetition. Verse 24 False, false messiah and false prophet will appear. They will perform great miracles and wonders in order to deceive even God's chosen people, if possible. So false prophets perform miracles because they use dark forces, the power of Satan. They perform miracles. They prophesy. They do wonders. So miracle is not a yardstick of true prophet. The greatest prophet in the Bible is called John the Baptist. Because Jesus said no one born of a woman is greater than John the Baptist. But John the Baptist never performed any miracle. Hello? Even Pharaoh's prophets were performing miracles. We are so much obsessed with miracles. Someone just does a small thing. It draw a lot of crowd. But look at their character. The Bible says, we shall know them by the fruit they bear. Look at what is happening in Nigeria. Scandal after scandal. I'm a prophet. But look at their lifestyle. Do they have the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Galatia chapter 5. The fruit of the Holy Spirit will enable you to know if truly this is a servant of God. Because you cannot be a servant of God without the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This uh, obsession of miracle is making so many people to lose their faith, to go astray because they are following miracle. Some are taking, they don't even take medication because they were lied to that it is a miracle. I shall do this. They have stopped taking their medication because they were told about miracle. And when you look at, can't you see you are being conned? Which miracle that Jesus performed, he performed in the same function, same, fun, uh, same manner. But you will find someone, he prophesied with handkerchief. He prophesied the same way, year in, year out. That one is a con man or con woman. You are running a prophet because you ask him, why is it a prophet? Because it performs miracles. Prophetic and miracle, they are totally different things. 
When you read the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 about the fruit of the Holy Spirit, go and read it. Miracle is another gift. Prophecy is another gift. But because he want to, to lie to you, to manipulate you, he try to do something that will make you be like Basak. Uh, the fruit of the Holy Spirit is an indicator of a true prophet. A true prophet cannot abuse people. A true prophet cannot be humanizer, cannot be a drunkard. And we have seen in Nigeria, majority of them cannot be money launderer, cannot be in wash wash. And you are saying it's a prophet, and yet it's mentioned in mega scandal. That one cannot be a true prophet. Ephesians chapter 4, verse uh, 11 and 14. 11 to 14. The Bible is telling us very clearly the prophet, what we should expect from a prophet. Uh, it is who gift gift, he appoints some to be apostles, others to be a prophet, others to be evangelists, others to be pastors, and others teachers. He did this to prepare all God's people for the work of Christian service in order to build the body of Christ, and we shall come together to the oneness in our faith in the knowledge of the Son of God. We shall become mature people, reaching to the very height of Christ's full stature. Then we shall no longer be children carried by the waves and blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of the deceitful people who lead others in the error by the tricks they invent. So a prophet should make you grow spiritually. A prophet should make you appear like Christ. A prophet has a role of making you grow in ministry and to mature so that you are not tossed. But they are using tricks. Be very careful. Satan operates with prophets, false prophets. Satan as apostle. You know people are taking advantage because the early church was founded on the ground of, of apostles. So everyone wants to be apostle. Some even don't know the role of apostle. They don't know the calling of apostle. But they want just apostle because it is an attractive name. Satan has his own apostle. The work of apostle is a man who was called out to go and plant churches. And he plant churches across Satan also as his apostle. Their work is just to plant sex orgy places, house parties, and drinking joints, opening wines and spirits, left, right, and center. Those are the apostles of Satan. Their work is to make altars of Satan. Satanic apostles. There are so many. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. He did this wickedness. He shifted to another place. He does the same. He opened pub. Quavers. Everywhere quavers. Everywhere quavers. Those are the apostles. Apostles of Satan. They are making altars. Where people are drinking sprees. Those are the altars. Being erected by the apostles. 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13. The Bible says, Those men are not true apostles. They are false apostles who lie about their work and disguise themselves to look like the real apostles of Christ. They open joints. They open guest house. They open Airbnbs. Those are the apostles of Satan. They open centers where wickedness will thrive. Those are the apostles of Satan. Satan disguised himself as Jesus. That one is seven point. Satan impersonate, 
pretend to be Jesus. He tried telling you, I am the Jesus. And they have come. Even in Bungoma, we have another man who, is, who call himself, I'm the Jesus. Jesus of Tongaren. Yes, we are Tongaren. We have Jesus Christ of latter days. There was a woman who was called Mary Akatha. He went and brought a white man and lied to a congregation that behold, I brought for you Jesus. Mary Akatha is well known. She brought a white man that this is your Jesus. Because Jesus told us, Satan want to be like Jesus. You know even someone who is afraid of you, try to be like you. Someone who is envious of you, try to be like you. Satan is so envious that you want to be like. You wanted to be like God. When you read the book of uh, Ezekiel chapter 28, and in such chapter 14, Satan wanted to be like God. So Satan has not stopped that behavior. He wants to be like Jesus. He wants to be like Jesus. Even in Islam, there is another one that they say, call Mahdi, and this is Jesus. Totally different character. And even the Bible tells us, Jesus himself, Matthew 24, verse 4 and 7. They tell you, oh, we love Jesus. But that is not the Jesus Christ of latter days, of, of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. They are telling you, we have Jesus of Christ of latter days. But what he stands for is totally different. We are Jehovah's Witness. But this Jehovah is totally different. Mahdi, not born in Israel, is not an Israelite, is not in the lineage of Jacob. Will only Mahdi married, was buried, he only live and will rule for seven years. Jesus Christ will lose forever. Yet we are being told we love Jesus. Men will come and say, We are Jesus. And I thank God because Jesus gave a prophecy. You know Jesus has three office of a king, of a priest, and of a prophet. Now Jesus is prophesying things to come. Matthew chapter 24, verse 7, 4, chapter 24, verse 4 to 7. Jesus answered, be on your guard. Do not let anyone deceive you. Jesus is preparing us to be on guard. And not let anyone deceive us. Many men claiming to speak for me will come and say, I am the Messiah. They deceive many people. You are going to hear the noise of battle closer by, and the news of battles far away, but not be troubled. Such things must happen, but they do not mean that the end has come. Verse 7. Christ will fight each other. Countries will fight each other. Kingdom will attack one another. There will be famine and earthquake and everywhere. So Jesus is telling us to be on guard. Because of what? There is so many people will come and say we are the Messiah. And if you don't have doctrinal knowledge, that's why we invite you to join our college, Mount Mora Theological College, so that we'll help you understand Jesus. The attribute of Jesus, pre-existence of him, divinity of him, humanity of him, so that we will not be deceived. We have a, a, a topic called Christology, the study of Jesus Christ, so that we will not be deceived. Jesus told us in the latter days, many prophets will come and say we are speaking of him, we are the Messiah. But uh, the eighth point, Satan communicate through media. Through media. We have seen some charms. We have seen some occult. We have seen some towel. We have seen some salt. We have seen some funny activities. Some blood. Some human sacrifice. Those are what Satan use. They use some zodiac. 
zodiac sign, the witchcraft sign. Satan use signs. He uses charms. But I want to advise you, child of God, going to witchcraft, you are becoming abomination before God. Using a charm is abomination before God. Deuteronomy 18, verse 9, the Bible says, when you come to the land that the Lord God is going to give you, don't follow the disgusting spirit uh, practices of the nation that are there. Do not sacrifice your children in the fire on the altars. So these are the medium. They use altars. That's why you need to be very careful. They tell you connect with this altar and you don't know that altar. You are not directed by the Holy Spirit. You just go and give your money there and destroy your marriage. There are some churches people went as couple. They live as single. There are some churches people went with cars. They live walking. There are some churches people went employed. They are unemployed. There are people, they went to a certain church. They have booming businesses. But now they are beggars because of that altar. Altar is like a fertilizer. There are some bad fertilizers that when you put on a farm, it destroys the crop and also the ground. Altars. People love altars, but they are demonic altars because those are what Satan uses. That's why the time of Elijah, even the prophet of Baal, they erected their own altars. You have to be very careful. This teaching of altar, it is where people love. We are going to break the altars. You don't know that you are denouncing the God's altar and you are entering in demonic altar that will leave you. Altar, you have been in that altar for 20 years. You are worse than the way you join it. You have to think twice. They are demonic altars. Huh. Let us continue reading. Do not let your people practice divination. When you go now, so many churches are open. People are going for what? Consultation. In Kenya, they call it Uduma. What are they going to do? Puonewa. Divination. They want to go and tell you, it's your neighbor, it's your family, it's what? That is causing you to be in this state. That one is called divination. And they are using unfamiliar spirit. Or charms. There are people who are working with charms. There are people who carry charms in their vehicle, in their businesses. They have charms. In their hard bag, they have charms. And do not let them consult the spirit of the dead. They are still worshipping. TB Joshua the late, they are still worshipping Mary, they are still worshipping the older prophets. Do not consult the spirit of the dead. When someone dies, there is no connection between the living and the dead. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9 tells us that the dead, they don't have passion, they don't have even wisdom, they don't have any connection with the things of this world. And we can also see in the time of Lazarus and the rich man. Abraham told the, 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 the rich man, when you cross over, you cannot go back. But here we are worshipping Mary. We are worshipping dead, the dead. We are worshipping the dead prophet. Oh, he was my father. He was my spiritual father. When he dies, what awaits him is judgment. There is nothing he can do for you. People are saying we are praying for the dead. You cannot pray for the dead. When they die, they go and face judgment. They now held accountable for the, how they lived here on earth. Be very, very careful. Oh, you are saying, you are attending a burial and you are saying, please greet for us. Oh, pray for us. A dead person, you should not have any conversation with a dead person. You become abomination before God. Let us read and see. 
The Lord your God hates people who do these disgusting things. And that's why it's driving those nations out of the land as you advance. Be completely faithful to the Lord. So when you are a person of charms, means you are not faithful to God. When you consult the spirit of the dead, you are not faithful to God. When you are consulting divination, you are not faithful to God. The ninth point, Satan has supernatural power. Satan has supernatural power to cause havoc, to cause disunity, to cause rangos, to cause hatred, to cause rebellion. He has supernatural power. You know we are told that Satan, I can step on him. I want to tell you Satan is a supernatural power. What we have is greater than his, but it's not powerless. The Bible says the one that is in us is greater than the one that is in the world. We have overcome him by the blood of the lamp and the words of our testimonies. But that does not mean that he's powerless. Just imagine, Satan could convince a third of angels to rebel against God. What about you? Satan is a supernatural power. Don't underestimate Satan. Don't underrate him. He can cause you to backslide. He has caused preachers to backslide, to engage in adultery, to engage in wickedness, to murder. Satan is very, very powerful. There is a preacher, not far from here, a, 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 who is now in prison because of sodomy. Satan made him to commit those unclean spirit, wicked forces, made him to perform, to commit sodomy. And we see in Catholic priests, pedophiles everywhere because Satan should not be underrated. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee away from you. Don't tolerate demonic activities. Don't al allow demonic practices. Don't allow homosexuality. That one is satanic programs. Don't allow corruption to enter your mind. That is satanic program. Don't enter in satanic activity. And finally, I want to encourage you now and tell you that God is beyond. God is more powerful than Satan. God is very, very powerful. He can, and he has given us that power to step over snake and scorpion because he is powerful. So when we rely on the powers of God, no one will backslide. No one will fall into sin because God is our power. First John chapter 4, verse 4. First John chapter 4, verse 4. The Bible is telling us, But you belong to God, my children, and have defeated the first prophet, because the spirit who is in you is more powerful than the spirit in those who belong to the world. So the spirit in you is greater than than the spirit that is in the world. The spirit in the world is the spirit of Satan. So the spirit, connect yourself with Christ. Have union with God, and you shall overcome Satan. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Lord, we thank you for this moment. We thank for your love. King of glory, we commit David before you. Your word said that we send your word, and your word healed our diseases. Father, remember him, O Jehovah, in that hospital bed at Kenyatta. Lord, we declare healing in the mighty name of Jesus. The spirit of infirmity, you have no power over his body in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, restore his health because we are a faithful God. We love you and we exalt your name. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray, believing and trusting. Amen. Thank you, thank you very much for your valuable time. I know I have not been releasing God, uh, these messages because of the tightness of the schedule. But I thank God for today. He has allowed me to share the word of God. I don't take it for granted. For you to watch this video and other videos, kindly proceed to YouTube, 
Address remain Eric Subline, E R I C K. Eric Subline, like, share, comment, and subscribe. We are now less than 50, so we cannot go live. Because the condition, you have to be 50 in number for me to go live so that we can engage one on one. Invite your friend to subscribe, Eric Subline, and you will be blessed abundantly. If you say, I want to stand with this ministry, you are highly welcome. You can send your love offering 0725102528 and pesa number 0725102528. If you are saying, how can we join the college? You are highly welcome. Mount Mora Theological College, we have diploma and certificate. Going for nine months for diploma and six months for certificate. People are learning. Don't be left behind. You need to know the knowledge of God, the wisdom, the mysteries of God revealed in the scripture. And here we give you that opportunity. Write to me, Mount Moriah Center at gmail.com. Mount Moriah Center at gmail.com. Or write to me, give me a call, 0725-102-528. The same number you can write, just write your name. WhatsApp number 0725 